Hey everyone, in the summer 20 release of Salesforce, uh, Flow, Flow Builder is definitely getting um, a lot of new features. It's becoming a lot more accessible. I'm going to go over that in just a little bit. One of the new features kind of makes it really similar to Process Builder, and that's the fact that you could now run a flow from a record change, where before, if you wanted to do that, you would have to first... Um, start it in a process builder and then pass the variables to the flow. So it seems that it's now becoming more self-sufficient for that matter. One example I want to show in this video right now is how you can do a before. Hold on. An example I want to show right now is, how the fuck do I want to put this? So for those who are familiar with Apex and triggers, you could write a trigger and have it be uh, before the record is saved, after the record is saved, or both. Uh, Flow Builder is now getting the same kind of feature where you could have it run before or after the record is saved. So what I want to do right now is give a little use case and how this maybe could be um, an alternative to writing triggers in that you can give Flow Builder a shot and where you would previously have to write code, now you may not have to anymore. That's not to say that Flow Builder, it's much easier to hit governor limits, whereas with Apex it's not. but chances are that's that's going to change over time if, if Salesforce does adjust their governor limits and how they're hit. <clears throat> so the example I want to do is just I'm going to make a validation rule on account. Um, I'm just going to pick a random field. Let's say that let's just say that we'll make a validation rule where upsell opportunity cannot equal maybe. So I'm going to edit the account object. Um, validation rules, let's make a new one. And I'm just gonna say, is pick val, upsell opportunity, maybe. I'll just say the error is, you can't choose maybe, pick something else. And what I'm going to try to do here is when I when I build my flow, since it's going to run before the record is actually saved to the database, I'm going to have it change its value and see if I can get around this validation rule. So now that the um, actually let me just give it a quick test too. Let's just make a new account and we'll choose the upsell as maybe. Uh, there's a couple required fields I just completely ignored. And there's my validation rule, cool. All right, let's hop into the new flow builder of summer 20. And as you could see, so previously flows really only had like two options, screen and then auto launched. I think schedule came out in the most recent release. And uh, now we've got platform event, which I'm sure I'll explore soon and record changed, which is what I'm talking about now. So we'll choose record changed and then you click edit and you kind of configure when you want it to start. So similar to the way that workflows have always been and how process builder is, um, you choose if you want it to initiate when the record's created, updated, or both. Um, I think in this example, I'll just have it set to be created. I don't really think it matters. Um, and then the section below, choose whether you want it to be before or after. Once again, kind of similar to if you'd write a trigger for before or after. So I'm going to leave it as before. What I have to do now is choose the object this is running off of, of course. So in that case, I'm going to choose account. All right, now our first node basically is all taken care of and um, we can kind of just hop into using a decision element to determine what what variables are what on the uh, on the account record? So I'm just going to call this what is upsell field, and we'll have our first outcome be not maybe. In our resources, you can see in the global variables we have the ability to pick that account record, and I'm going to pick upsell opportunity is not equal maybe. Let's make a new outcome. 
and we'll just do the opposite basically. Upsell opportunity does equal maybe. Um, I think that's all we need really for outcomes at the moment. I'm going to drag my first node into that decision and then we'll use an assignment element. So although you don't see update records, you do use assignments to update this. And we'll say, um, make it something else. So this is just, you know, a hypothetical situation, but all I'm trying to do here is that in the event um, someone was gonna pick maybe, rather than them hitting the validation rule, we could just have a before flow change that option for them. Um, you know, and hypothetically say you had data coming from an external system and you didn't want it to get rejected, that's, you know, a use case of this. Of course, extremely hypothetical, but um, I just made it up in about 10 seconds. So what we'll say is account upsell opportunity is equal to, um, and in this case, we'll just keep it as null, if anything. So. If, uh, if a record was coming from an external system, it had maybe selected, but you still wanted that record to make it, well, you could just null out the field in that case, and the validation rule wouldn't get hit. And then all you gotta do is drag it, and we're gonna choose maybe as the outcome. And for this use case, that's basically it. This hypothetically should work, so I'm gonna give it a save. Unreject maybe flow. And last but not least, I'll activate it. So let's give it a shot. As you can see, when I did this a few minutes ago, I was rejected by my validation rule. Um, I don't even think I should have to refresh the page. I'm just going to simply hit save again. And as you can see, the before flow ran before the record was saved, so it wasn't committed to the database yet. And since the flow ran before, and my criteria was that upsell opportunity was maybe, it nulled it out for me, simply put. So um, I have a feeling this feature is going to come in handy for a lot of different use cases, especially because it's going to lessen the need for triggers to be written and it's going to open the playing field for a lot more people um, and a lot more developers and admins to get their hands dirty with automations and Salesforce. So I hope to make more of these and, and make people's lives easier. Let me know if you have any suggestions or requests. I'm happy to like do some um, use case videos, but um, I also wanna cover more topics on Summer 20 as well because it does have a lot of cool features. Um, all right guys, thanks for watching.